Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about Helicobacter pylori and especially we are talking about the introductory part about the Helicobacter pylori bacteria. Now I must tell you Helicobacter pylori is a, one of the most significant type of microorganisms that we want to talk about in this whole course because this is related with uh, a very very different kind of and very clever mechanism of causing disease in human being using a very specific chemical enzymatic system and we'll be talking about the system in details in future now let's first talk about the basic features and properties of helicobacter pylori now helicobacter pylori are gram negative definitely they are gram negative organisms and they are having a typical structure the characteristics uh, structure uh, move of the gram helicobacter pylori is a kind of uh, like this it's a kind of it's not a straight, it's not a sur sur circular, it's not a rectangular structure. Instead, it's a kind of curved structure like that. They are gram negative, but they are having this kind of curved structure. Usually, under microscopic field, usually we can see oh, more, or so let's say two or more pi pylori are arranged like that. Uh, they are attached with each other like that. So, so let's just draw something like that. So you can find a structure like that. So these are those bacteria. These are those bacteria, right? And usually, so let me talk about a little bit. Now they are carved or spiral. So let me write carved or spiral in nature. This is the first thing. And second thing is that they are having flagella. In the flagella we are talking about, they are having multiple flagella at the polar region. So let me draw this is uh, multiple flagella in the polar region, right? So that means they are multiflagellate. So multiple flagella in pole, okay? In any any one of the poles, right? And but the most important and significant part about this helicobacter pylori or helicobacter pylori is that they can produce urease, which is an enzyme, right? Because it is having an ase, it's an enzyme. Now, this enzyme is having the property to convert urea into ammonia, right? So it's ammonia gas, right? Now this ammonia can react with uh, water to make ammonium hydroxide and all these things because this ammonia is basically, this ammonia is basic in nature. Now as it is basic, that means high pH, so it will increase the pH of the medium, right? So this is a very important part. Now this enzyme acts on it, convert urea to ammonia, it is basic in nature, right? Now this helicobacter pylori, so this is a property and what is the importance of the property, we'll be studying it later. Now another important property is that helicobacter pylori lives in, uh, they colonize, so let me write, they colonize in gastric mucosa, gastric mucosa or gastric epithelial cells. So they usually colonize in gastric epithelial cells or gastric mucosas, right? Now what is gastric mucosa? So if I draw our uh, structure a little bit, so let's say here it is, uh, so it's a diagrammatic representation, say, say this is our uh, stomach and after, right after the stomach, we are coming it in and we are having a lot of things going on there and obviously we are having large things coming out like that. So here it is, a kind of structure like this. So if, if I draw, if I write that this is a kind of digestive system structure, in this case, if this is the stomach, so let's say, this is the stomach, and this part is the duodenum, right? So this is the duodenum. Now this region is important. And also, this part, which is called the esophagus, right? Esophagus. So this is... This is esophagus. So these are the two regions where this helicobacter pylori usually colonizes. Okay, and they usually colonize in the in inner side of it. Now, usually, let let if I draw it again. So if this is uh, so, let me go to the little bit. Okay, so let's say this is the lining of the cells. These are the cells. Let's say let's say these are the cells. 
uh, the segment wise cells are arranged they are having nucleus and all this so these are the cells and outside of the cell there is a mucosal layer now this mucus layer prevents prevents duodenum wall against the hcl right so they prevents it prevents against acid now the acid is coming from stomach right so they prevent this duodenum wall against the strom stomach acid right so that's a very very important point in all these cases otherwise the, we know that here in the stomach we are having very acid content because the acid cells secreting cells need acid and the acid secretion is important because some of the enzymes require this acidic environment as their optimum environment to carry out the reaction right now in this case uh, as the acid uh, is secreted uh, the environment is much much more acidic now as the environment is ac acidic there is a difficulty in the bacteria like helicobacter pylori to live there right because they need to colonize in these places so for colonizing of this bacteria in this particular place they require to low down the pH a little bit and the way to low down the pH usually we know that suppose we are having an acid somewhere right so that means a low pH now if we need to balance this acid we need to low down the acidic content what we need to add we must add base or basic content right so if we add base with this acid in those cases only, because we know bases are having high pH, in those cases only, right proportion of attachment will provide us neutral condition. Sorry. It will provide us neutral condition or neutral pH. Right? So that's very, very important in, in this case. And this thing can be achieved using this urease enzyme. And the urease enzyme are secreted uh, not a, it's, it's, it's secreted by helicobacter pylori so that is the importance or magic of urease enzyme secretion that's why they're secreting this now this urease will convert urea into ammonia ammonia is basic so it will reduce down the acidic content now the environment will be uh, neutralized and then the bacteria can easily colonize there right so that's the basic funda we'll be talking about it later in the future in the pathogenesis video and another important thing is that uh, they are related with different kind of gastrointestinal diseases related with the symptoms like diarrhea, abdominal cramp and all these things because they are related with uh, uh, gastritis actually. So if I talking about, uh, if I talk about here, so they are related with gastritis, different uh, types of gastritis and also they are related with, uh, we know it is called ulcer, right? Ulcer means it's a damage of your, uh, this uh, in epithelial lining so it's called ulcer right peptic ulcer so usually this ulcer is also called peptic ulcer okay so usually this kind of infection if it is becoming chronic it can cause ulcer otherwise gastro uh, gastritis different forms of gastritis are caused by helicobacter pylori and we can uh, culture this bacteria using different uh, selective mediums in, in our lab uh, but this bacteria is growing very very fast and they are using their mechanism to go against our normal defense mechanisms and they also can recruit other immune cells uh, in this place too right so this is a kind of condition now in most of the people uh, can have this kind of helicobacter pylori in, uh, inside their body but some of them very few of them uh, will uh, go to cause several kind of diseases like gastri gastritis or ulcer and all these things now mild form of gastritis can be seen in many bacteria especially the uh, main, many uh, people sorry especially in country like india you can find many people suffering from small or mild uh, symptoms of gastritis in mo most of the cases and those gastritis uh, most of the times are caused by helicobacter pylori but we are not bothering about that because they are not causing us that much of pain but now if it is uh, of chronic uh, case and if it is growing uh, better and bigger in, uh, throughout the time then it may lead to us in those cases we need to be uh, very careful and we need to seek the medical attention right otherwise we don't require it uh, so that's about the basic properties of helicobacter pylori. In the future video, we'll be talking about the infection.